Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Mark Hill, and this is the segment. On today's episode, instead of having athletes racing down the trail to chase after their personal records and get a new personal best, today we have a gentleman, and his name is Mark Brody, and this is about his segment in life with leukemia. So take a listen, sit back and relax, and hope you can glean some great information on how Mark had to change his thoughts and his mindset in order to deal with this segment in his life. All right, guys, enjoy the show. How you doing, Mark? Good to see you, buddy. Always good to see you, Mark. So thanks for having me on. This is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So when I talk to you about your journey, it really inspired me to have you on the show. I think that your story is going to truly help a lot of people on how they see things, whatever segment in life that they are enduring. For the folks that don't know you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, well, the spoiler alert, you and I know each other pretty well. We've worked together back, uh, oh gosh, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, we did a lot of work with that, uh, pharmaceutical sales and had a lot of fun. Um, I'm currently 59 years old and now i'm retired i live in santa barbara california so i i'm i'm back to where i grew up um what i think we're going to talk about today is is the whole idea of going through the cancer journey uh what and how that was and how that i think sort of wraps back into the whole segment what, what do we do when we're throwing kind of a big Oh my God, in our face. So Mark, what exactly happened to you? Yeah, um, I ended up, or let's just take it from, from four years ago. I was diagnosed with a, a fairly ro rare form of leukemia called ALL. Mm. And we say rare, it's about 5,000 people a year get this form of cancer. And this came out of the blue. The only symptoms I had were that I was feeling a little tired, run down, you know, stressed out. And like that could be anything in life. You know, one, one day, one night, I just ended up getting some really bad random pain in my low back. They did some blood tests and the doctors came back and said, you know, we, we think you have cancer. This was, um, this was something, like I said, it was unexpected to, to everybody. I know you do a lot of hiking, you do a lot of walking, you stay pretty active, and, and the symptoms that you had, you know, the lower back pain, being tired, fatigue, how did you know that that was different than, you know, physical activity? Was it a, was it a gut feeling, or, or what, did you completely feel different, or did you just get caught by the medical system? Did they find it? that way you know, prob probably both um they couldn't figure out why i was feeling the way i was and i was having some very very random unexplained like lower back and and pain into my leg and so you know one of the doctors just did a blood test you know i, I went to see them they sent me home i came back I said hey you know this 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 isn't getting better. You need to do something a little bit more. So I was lucky in that I was able to say, hey, I'm not sure you guys are looking as deep as you need to. They did a blood test and it came back and leukemia being a blood cancer shows up in the blood. Gotcha. So that is, is how they make the diagnosis. Now what do you do? Does everything hit you at once? I mean, how did you react to it and what did you have to do to start to overcome it yeah that's an interesting thing because i'll back up a step and i'll say that this is where it comes into where you kind of know yourself as you get a little bit older you know all of us know how we react mm -hmm. we can't always control it we can't always predict it like oh i always freak out in this situation i'm pretty calm here or I'm kind of freaking out, but I'm a little calm. Um, my advantage was that for the really, really big things, I have this sort of brain that slows down and, 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 and can process things. So when, when you ask me that question, I think, I think the first thing is how well do you know yourself? Because life's always going to throw you challenges. Life is always going to give you the, 
give you things that you don't want. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I remember this pretty clearly as the doctor came in and it was somebody that I knew, somebody that I knew socially and said, he said something very important. He said, you know, I, the tests are in, we're pretty sure you have cancer. Mm -hmm. We don't know what type it is yet. So we don't want to alarm you because it may be something very simple. We just don't know. And so my response was very simple. I said, you know, I'm going to have a really great freak out at some point. But for right now, until we know, there's really no reason. I, I don't want to have to worry about that. And I just remember the doctor just looks at me and says, okay, that's fair. Because at that point, you know, I knew that, oh boy, this is not going to be good. Right. But I can make it a lot worse by projecting or worrying or doing something. I'm going to find out in two days. Mm. It could be just a slight one or it could be a more difficult one. Mm. So it was one of those things to where I was lucky enough that that's the way that my brain would work, you know, for the big things. Yeah, no, that's huge. <clears throat> that's a really good mental skill. I think that's a key tip right there for folks that are watching is that really the part about not freaking out in the moment wouldn't have done you any good anyways. Um, you were kind of in that spot that's just taking every little step as it came your way. Like, well, we'll find out what it is in a couple of days. So I'll probably have a freak out at some point, but right now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's not to say that, that, you know, I'm Zen or everybody's Zen. The other day, we couldn't get a table at a restaurant, and I freaked out, walked up to the manager, and I said, hey, you know, and I, I overreacted, right? I overreacted over these little things there, but that's what I do. I know kind of when and where I overreact. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, at afterwards, I didn't catch myself in the moment, but afterwards, I was like, wow, that's exactly what I do. Thank God I overreact in the small things. <laughs> yeah. Well, part of that, too, is a good self-reflection, right? Um, being able to look back and uh, the way how you respond to things. I think that's step one. If you're ever going to do any project or any really big thing in your life, is you, you have to sit there and say, hey, I am going to have some challenges. I am going to react. Sometimes I'm going to be proud of it. Sometimes I'm going to be good with it. Sometimes I'm not going to be proud of it. Mm -hmm. But if you kind of know how your brain reacts and how you react, there's a lot of evidence in our past on how we react. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's number one, whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah. I mean, it gets back to the key you had said earlier is, you know, really looking at yourself and getting to know who you are. So yeah. you get yeah. through these segments in life, whatever life throws at you. Right. And in this case, it's something really big. And it sounds like your step-by-step -step approach to it completely mm -hmm. helped you stay focused, zen, as you said, to take this thing on. Take us a little bit through those next two days when you found out it was leukemia. Yeah. And then, and then kind of let us know, were there any keys once you found that out, are there any keys that you can give to somebody who's out there that's um, facing something like this in their life right now? Yeah, I, I think, well, the, the, the first thing is, the, 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 the first thing that you have to, or that I had to decide was, who do I get on my side? Mm -hmm. And what sort of support am I gonna get would help me? I didn't want people that were going to be, giving me advice or telling me what to do or what have you. And all these people were simply like, what can I do to help? I said, well, you know, gosh, I'm going to need these things. I'm not quite sure if my affairs are in order. You know, um, can you, do you have a friend who's a lawyer? I said, here's a stack of paper. Can you just go through all of these? Um, so I went back and it's like, okay, these are the things that I'm going to need to do. And the second thing was, and, and the good thing is that most people in this situation become pretty numb. And you, you, time really slows down. You start thinking to yourself, wow, wow, that might have been it. You know, this journey might have come to an end. And the, the, the process is, what 
do I want to do for the next two or three days? What do I need to do? And who do I need to have helping me? So that was the big thing for me. And uh, sure enough, you know, three, two to three days, two days later, they came back with the blood test. They said, we need you to come back in and we need you to meet the doctors who will be treating you. My, my whole approach there was, I really wanted to find someone that I could trust. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to find someone who was good. And luckily in the Santa Barbara area, there's some very, very, very good doctors. And I got one of the better ones and I could just, I had a good strong gut feeling that she was as good as I thought she was. We've all been in this. When somebody is, is, is saying, trust me, I know what to do. And you're kind of like, ah. you have to, you have to trust that the process that that person is going to take you on is going to be the good one. Mm. And so luckily I, I really did trust this person and I, this is sort of the relationship that I had is that I set up a sort of a, an understanding up front, which was this, I said, I'm going to stay off the internet. I'm not going to go crazy about this, but when I have a question, it has, I, I need it answered right away. And the doctors were like, deal. I said, okay, we can move forward because this allowed me to trust the process. Without trust in a process, your mind's gonna wander, your energy's gonna wander, your attention's gonna wander, and you're not going to do, or you're not gonna be able to achieve what you really wanna do. Wow, that's really powerful. I like, I like that. Yeah. One of the things that I heard you say was you, you built a team when you went through this. Yes. Uh, you reached out to folks that would be you know, good to be on your team. So I think yeah. that would be key to get the support mechanism of the team, um, getting your affairs in order, getting an attorney, you know, just yeah. getting a team of support so that you don't have to worry about all that other mm -hmm. stuff and you can concentrate on, you know, the segment that's in front of you. And then your medical team. So you kind of grouped all that into one and just kind of had it all organized as a, as a nice, effective team, the Mark Brody team for this area in your life. And it has to be, and you know, bringing it back to what you do, if somebody's going to be trying to personal best, athletics, and what have you, there are gonna be a lot of people that are gonna be giving you advice and they don't know what they're saying. There's gonna be a lot of people taking up your time and it may or may not be productive. And, and so the first thing that I would say is that anytime you're going on or trying to embark on some big change, make sure that the people around you are supporting that in the way that you need. Mm. You, you know, your wife, your family, or your husband, your kids, or your friends. We really are the sum of the five or 10 people we spend our time with. And, and if we got to stay away from those people at that time, that's okay. If we have to add other people, that's okay. For me, I needed to add people that were going to help me and that really kind of understood that this was a process mm -hmm. and nobody needed to, you know, give me, you know, oh, they were going to support me. No, you, you were going to help me through this process. I was lucky because I chose probably four out of the five right people. Say, let's go into the mind of a, of a teammate, you know, somebody yeah. who's a friend or a family. Mm -hmm. And from your perspective, tell, you know, can you share with the folks out there that are a friend or a family of somebody who's going through this, you know, what are some of the key takeaways that they can do or maybe think of to be a really strong teammate for that person? Well, first of all, it's their process, right? Like, how I chose to go through it was how I needed to go through it for it to make sense to me mentally so I wouldn't lose it. Secondly, so that I could make it through it because there's there are no guarantees that you're going to make it through a treatment. And third, that I'd have the best chance for success. So I think it has to be that way. I'll put myself in the position to where, you know, I had another friend going through cancer. I never gave them advice. I never told them how to feel. And it was just really pretty simple. It was like, do you need me to do anything? And then sometimes it was yes, sometimes it was no. 
And I, I think it, the important thing was that that a person going through a process of change doesn't always know what they want. Because if they did, they would have done it earlier. Oh. Right? Right. Or a person isn't going to take, let's say that I know the answer to it, but it's up to them to make the decision to do it. Me telling them what to do is not going to have them do it. So my role is just, sometimes I can do this, sometimes I can't. Can I help this person? Can I support this person? If I'm too close to a person, I want something for them more than they want it for themselves. That's the key. If I want something more than they want it for themselves, I'm not the right person for the job. And I mess things up. I do it all the time. I want my siblings and my friends to change and I know how they can do it and I'm telling them. And then you know what they do? They dig their heels in. So the way to help somebody is to realize again, how close are you to the process? Are you really the right person? Sometimes you are, sometimes you're not. Hmm. It's nothing personal. And what happens if your best friend goes out and chooses some random lawyer that they knew from high school because she can stay, you know, dispassionate about it, get all the paperwork done when they're a lawyer and they're a friend and they're like, hey, you're my friend. Why didn't you choose me? Wrong person for the job. Sure. It's kind of that simple. That makes sense. Yeah. The key, I, the key that I hear you say is just allowing the person to go through their process and just be right. there to support them. Right. It's already overwhelming enough as it is. Yeah. You don't need to add more to the mix. As soon as you start adding complexity or telling them or helping them too much, which I'm guilty of like anybody else, I think that's that's sort of the way that uh, you might not be the right person for, for the job. I know we talked about a lot of things. Um, if you had to boil down the you know, biggest keys of, of that process, what would you say? The, the takeaways would be. I had to be okay with this might not work. Okay, the treatment might not work. Mm -hmm. All right, but you have to set that aside. I was going to do everything that the doctor said in order to, to make sure that the treatment had the highest chance to be successful. Okay, and it's really hard to sit there and say, oh, I'm going to get real zen. I'm going to leave the outcome alone because this is a serious outcome. But but in a, in a larger sense, this was all I could do. And there was a couple of times that, you know, I had the, you know, the meltdowns and, and everything and just completely lost it and had to be brought back up. But that's normal in any change. Mm -hmm. So the, the, I didn't purposely have that, didn't set out to have that mindset. But, it, you know, when we reflect about it, it was the mindset was, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that I do the best in this treatment. And that was kind of, you know, so that, that was the mindset. It's like, hey, we're gonna get through this. And I, I had a trust in this doctor that I had to have. I didn't understand the treatment and that wasn't very important, but I, I wanted to make sure that I did what I needed. A friend of mine told me that the mind doesn't know the difference between reality and what you tell it. Oh. And so it's just like anything else. If you tell yourself, or if you've been told as a little kid that you're not good enough, or you know, that you're unlovable, or that you're unathletic, or you know, whatever, people take that on and they believe that. This is what I tell myself. I don't really have cancer, but they're treating me just on the off chance that I do because they don't want it to grow in me. Hmm. And that was what I would walk around and go like, I don't have cancer. Hmm. I mean, these are super good doctors and they're just being really nice to me and treating me on the off chance that, that there is something growing there. We want to make sure that it never does and I stay healthy and happy. It was like, okay. And that was a story I could tell myself in order to get through sometimes. Yeah. Between those two things, like focusing on, I'm going to give myself every single opportunity I can to make sure I have a successful treatment. And then the other thing is like, yeah, and I probably don't even have it anyways. Mm. So on those two areas were the, were the ways that I use it. Everybody 
has to find their own way to do this. Now, those moments when you had those meltdowns or those times when you really felt like, you know, may, hey, I do have cancer, mm -hmm. and that doubt trickled in, you know, how did you overcome that doubt? Is, was there something that you did to pull yourself out of it, whether it be physically or mentally? Well, I was lucky that I had a really good doctor. So I knew that my process was, first, I had to get... Oh my gosh, we got, I got to get through this initial phase. We have to get in remission. Then we have to find a donor. Then I have to go get a stem cell transplant uh, and where I get new bone marrow process. So there were uh, meltdowns in kind of each phase along the way. That 50% could all be dead within a month after, after remission. So uh, I was just sitting there going, I, that, those aren't good stuff. Those, those are not good. Those are just not good. I mean, why am I even doing all this? And so she said, well, what makes you think you're going to be in the 50% uh, that die? Hmm. Like, oh, yeah. And then she said, I don't know if you're going to be in the 50% that dies. I said, do you want me to stop treating you? If I thought for a second that you were going to be in the 50% that die, we wouldn't be treating you. But I don't think that's the case. Hmm. And, I, and it serves me, again, as a doctor talking why would, I wouldn't be in this business if I thought you were in the 50% that was going to die. I'm approaching everybody. Um, these are the people that are going to make it. And we're going to take them on the transplant. Transplant's going to take. So I thought, oh, you know what? That does make more sense. Yeah. Huh. Wow. So that, that, was, that was kind of what I took as like, how do I know that? And I'm not saying it, it made me feel any better. I'm not saying that it was a cure-all and you know, but it's another way of not tricking the mind, but reinforcing the fact that you're in a process that you don't know the outcome. Mm -hmm. So place yourself under the position that allows you to concentrate on that. Why wouldn't I be in the 50% that make it? Right. I have a great doctor. I, I have access to the City of Hope, which is best medical, one of the best medical facilities. I'm still fairly healthy. I, I can be in the 50%. Why not? Who's to say I'm not going to be in the 50% that make it? Right. And what I love about that is everything else is out of control, you know, as far as getting this and everything. And everything. That mindset that yeah. you is something that you can control. That's uh, that's really powerful, Brody. Wow. Yeah. It's great that we can look back on this event and talk about it today. And uh, we're pleased to announce it, to share with everybody, how how long post-leukemia are you? Yeah, April, this April will be four years. Wow. Yeah. The four years since I got out of the transplant unit at City of Hope. So I spent uh, three and a half months down there in their, in their transplant unit and living down at City of Hope in order to get what they call a, a bone marrow st uh, stem cell transplant. It really taught me to believe in the good side of humanity. Mm. And one of the neat things that, that does come out of this is, is that we're, we're inundated with the media, with our people, with our daily problems, with uh, this idea of, you know, humanity and global warming and it's the end of the world and COVID. But once you see the good side of what humans can do and how much they care and what they will do to help, you know, that's, that's, that's a really important thing. That's a really important thing to have. So, uh, I'm sure everybody on this webcast knows someone who's been through cancer. And unfortunately, one out of three of us are going to get cancer. So you either know somebody or it's going to be you. Wow. That's just the way life is. And um, when that happens, you know, you, you, I think what they're going to start to see is that everybody here is going to be part of that good side of humanity because they're going to jump in, they're going to help. They're going to uh, support people along the way. And that's just what people do. People do help. There's a very small percentage that don't, but the vast portion of humanity helps.
when you were going through that, did you feel that that gave you some wind in your sails when you would see that part of humanity, our humanity? Yeah, both. It, it was a very, because I, I also had been beaten down by the media and then, you know, what people say and by life. And and you can't help it like building up these, these at least me, I couldn't help but building up a lot of the negative. I was believing a lot of the negative press and feelings that, you know, humanity doesn't care. We're, we're going towards a mass extinction. We're never going to do that. And then you're involved with people that really do want to make a difference. They will help. You need to ask the right people. And it, it gives you a lot of faith in humans because you don't always get to see them at their best. Man, really powerful stuff, Brody. So, you know, today, in today's world, uh, living day by day, how has that changed you? Yeah, you, you know, I'd love to say that I, I live day by day in the moment that I'm really zen and nothing bothers me. And, but that's just not the case. That is just not the case. What, what I think, that I talked a little bit about it before, that the, there are two things that I can point to is that um, I have a lot more faith in humanity and in and, and, and the good side of people. Yeah, there's there's a lot of unpleasant people and people can do some really nasty things and they'll always do that. But we don't focus enough on the good side. You know, going through a process like this with cancer and and you you are close to death. I mean, there's just no way about that. And what you essentially do is you are witnessing your own what wake, you're witnessing your own burial it, or how people will react to your life because what I believe is that all of us, all of us, our biggest fear is that what we do in our lives don't matter. That somehow we didn't do enough to like push life, you know, kick that little rock, just whatever portion down the evolutionary path, you know. What did we do to really better this? And we always doubt ourselves because that's, I think, in the nature of humans. You know, do people really like me? Did I do the right things? The short amount of time that I was here, you know, did I live an honorable life? And what happens when you go through a process like this is that people show up and you're going to find out really quickly where you stand. Are you on the good side or are you on the bad side? And overwhelmingly, I think the biggest thing for me was that I found out that I, I did live an honorable life. I lived a good life. And, and that I can now be proud of who and what I am, regardless of what other people, or regardless of what I thought other people thought of me or what I thought was going on. Wow. And that's probably the most important thing because in that point in time, people are gonna be really honest. They're either gonna help you, mm -hmm. they're gonna show love and gratitude for what you did, they're gonna help you in your process, or if you didn't live an honorable life, you might not get that many people helping and supporting you. Hmm. People will let you know. You just have to be open to it. And it took that big of a that big of an event for me to go, oh, oh maybe I'm on the good side of the ledger. So um, those are the, those are probably the two big takeaways. Um, it's so hard to live day by day and be grateful and all that. And I'm not wired to go out and breathe the fresh air and, oh, you know. <laughs> Smell the flowers. <laughs> you know, so the flowers. I'm just not wired that way. I'm not, it never was. And I, and I just, <laughs> so I, I give myself a lot more slack that I'm not wired that way, but I, I do remember that that you know, hey, I, I saw my uh, I saw my funeral. I saw what people would would say and react about me. I know what they think. They showed it to me. Mm. So that's an important thing that um, I think went through the process. And uh, I don't know. Some people say they're grateful for it. I'm not. <laughs> that's just who I am. Yeah. I'm not particularly grateful. Uh, I went through it. I made it out. I'm super grateful about that. I'm super grateful that 
I have a new outlook on humans. Wow. Powerful stuff there, guys, from Mr. Thank Mark Brody. Holy cow. Really appreciate you sharing your story with us. Um, there is a lot of great information here that uh, people can glean and, and take with them on their own journeys and in their own segments in life. Um, Mark, are there, is there anything else you want to say in closing? Oh, I don't know. I'm just sort of a... <laughs> 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 I think with athletics, or, and I think the process, I, I, you know, trust the process, figure out, you know, I, I used to, you know, back in the day, loved surfing, swimming, sailing, you know, all, all those things. And, and if you don't enjoy the process and trust the coach and trust these things and have a good support system around you, it's just not going to be not going to be getting as much as you can out of it and i think that's the main key there yeah that's really important exactly and for you younger kids that are on a team and right now covid is hit and you've been sidelined that's hard oh that's yeah. hard yeah that's that's tough but as mark brody is saying you know trust that process yeah listen to what your coach is saying trust your team build your team yeah and uh, when this thing ends, you guys will be coming out of this like a speed train out of a tunnel. Yeah, because it'll end. And the people that the people that did the right thing during the during the treatment phase will, I think, are going to do really well. Yeah, agree. Wow, powerful stuff, Mr. Brody. Okay, we'll talk. Right. Got it. Great to see uh, you as always. Happy to have you share the story. Thanks again. Hey, uh, one last thing. Um, well, actually two. First of all, go into a nurse. And the second is that forgot to tell you about the, I have a scholarship named after me at UCSB, which is given out each year um, to the baseball team. And it's actually split up into five. So it's a significant chunk of money. But what it is, is that, you know, I belong to a group of people we get together once a year and we were talking about you never really know how big of an impact you make in your life because you're going through your daily life you're trying to do your best you're kind of just in the grind and that the big thing about cancer was that we were talking about there's enough people that showed that they cared that they they showed their love they showed their appreciation and also that um they want to do something real and concrete, which was neat because they're giving back to UCSB, the baseball team, to the athletic department. So right now, this is year number five of the Drott Brody Hammerhead, it's a big name, Living Scholarship Fund. What scholarship has to do with me, I still have no idea. But it funds partial scholarships for five people on the baseball team each year, and we've been doing it for five years. So it's a really, really cool thing to have. Um, for someone that never played baseball, was always in water sports, couldn't catch a ball for the life of me, unless it was a big water polo ball, uh, to have a baseball scholarship named after me, talk about an irony. But hey, I don't make the rules. I just play by the real ones. Show up, have a purpose, and always win the party. Regardless of the final score, you gotta win the party. See ya. All right, that is the episode with Mark Brody and Leukemia. Man, kind of heavy stuff, but glad that he is still around and some great information on what you can do if you have a serious segment like this happening in your life. So guys, uh, thank you for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. And don't forget, when the odds seem stacked against you, always...